Hello everyone, this is Mr. Alperun here, and today I'm here for my breakdown on Tsuyu, Froppy. Now, Froppy is somewhat of a simple character, some say she's weak, I think not. If you, She is pretty unusual and she gets used to playing, but she's actually really fun and has some really good and unique tools, which is always fun in the character. Um, she has interesting range to, uh, range with her lick moves, <laughs> these like quirk 1 and quirk 2 moves. She has good like ways of controlling the space with these, depending on when your where your opponent is. Um, she can go invisible as you saw before. She's a good red attack that reaches far and you can combo out of. She has good mix-ups, especially when you're in invisible mode, because you can't see the red of a, her red attack or the yellow of her yellow attacks. So she has really good mix-ups when she's invisible. And yeah, she has decent damage. And she also has a loop that I like to refrain from using. Because I don't think it was intended. I think it's fine if you were only able to do like two repetitions, like muscular. You can do two repetitions of his, his armor move. But if you can get 11,000 damage consistently, for zero dash cancels, I think that was unintentional and it's broken. <laughs> but yeah, I think if she could do like an attack into her armor attack and then start her combos that way, that would be fair. Because she does have slightly broke below average damage. So that would help her out a little bit. But like, have it meteor blow or something, like, you shouldn't be able to do it like <laughs> seven times. I think that's the amount of times you can do it. Three, four, Oh, I messed up. But you can do it a bunch of times, just keep going. So I think if you just did like two, and then it would meet you if you did it even more. That would be fair. Anyways, let's get into her buttons. So her regular attack string is this three hitting attack string. You can dash cancel after any point, but you're never going to do the third hit. Uh, well, at least not in my experience, because... You can't really get anything off of it, unless you're like right beside a wall or something. And you can't cancel it into any of the quirk buttons, so you're never going to do the third hit of it. And there's a gap in between it. It does keep her safe, so if you want to run away from the opponent, you can do all three hits, and then you like bounce all the way over here if you want to run away for some reason. But Tsu doesn't really have project out, so I don't see why you'd want to do that too often. The air attack string is another three hitting attack string. It looks pretty similar, except in the air she ends with a kick. The kick's actually useful because it's a really consistent wall splat. It sends the opponent flying quite far, so if I was over here, it might be from wall splat. No, it was close though. But yeah, it's a good move. You can cancel you, this one. You can actually cancel into her other quirk buttons for some more damage. And if you cancel it into her um, lick quirk one, then it is actually a really, really great wall splat, and it'll wall splat from like anywhere. So yeah, it's a it's a good thing. And obviously, you're gonna be doing like the first two hits in your regular combo strings. Okay. Her red attack, I already mentioned in the beginning, is really good. It's really quite fast. It um, has also really decent range. Above average, it's about here. Okay, a bit less. Maybe it's about average range. And you can combo off of it, which is the most important part. Oops, you didn't get to see the full damage. So she can get good damage off of her red attack, and once we get into her invisibility move, her red attack is a really good move you're going to be using to mixing the opponent up, because when you're invisible, you can't actually see the redness of it, so it almost just looks like she's going in for a normal attack. So when you're invisible, um, your opponent's gonna be really scared of this red attack of yours, because are you gonna do a normal attack and are they gonna get hit from their sidestep, or are you gonna do a red attack and they can't see it? It's very scary, so a red attack is something you're often gonna be landing and being able to get a combo from, which is good. So if you're like here and you know you're facing a wall, since you're in the air, you can get her like guaranteed wall splat stuff. Oh, 
And there we go. I messed that up a bit, but that was still pretty decent damage for a single dash cancel. Okay. Um, her armor attacks on the ground. This is what I showed at the beginning. Can lead into a loop because the opponent is stunned for so long once they get hit by it. Once again, I don't think this was an intentional loop. But you can combo out of it normally and treat it as a normal armor attack. Um, so if I do two hits into the armor attack and then into what, uh, other Zerva Quote buttons, that works as well. But yeah, you can get a loop with it, but I tend to not use that too much. Sometimes if I'm online and I want to do some extra damage, I'll do like one or two repetitions. To get some more damage that way, but I don't like to use it as like an infinite loop because I, I, it, it's broken and I, I don't like it. <laughs> In the air, she actually has an interesting armor attack, kind of like Mineta's armor attack. So if you just press it once, she kind of just does a swing, so it can be good for getting in on zonas or something, so you can swing in close to them. But if you press the button again, she does actually go in for an, ta an attack, so you can do the swing, and if you press the button again, near the end of the swing, she stays yellow, which is really good. So look at this whole time she's yellow. She's a yellow for like a whole second there, which is pretty crazy. There we go, yeah. And it's an attack as well, if you hit the opponent with it. And you're going to be using it in the air with her air combo strings because it adds damage to her combos. And you can cancel it into other river quark buttons. Um, yeah, it's a really good move. Like, if maybe not Bakugo, but someone like uh, Endeavor or, or Darby or someone with, you know, lots of different unusual projectiles, I can use this to get in. Like, I'll, I can do, if I'm really far away, you know, run in, do a dash into the yes, yellow attack. Dodge what they're doing, even if it hits me, it doesn't matter because I'll armor through it. And then if I'm close enough and I think I'll be able to punish them, I can go in for the attack and then try and get a combo. Okay, so for her quirk one, it is this just this tongue lick move. She just quick lick from it's a kind of I use it as her projectile. It reaches a surprisingly long distance. It's about here, I think. Oh no, here. Nope, here. There we go. It it is deceivingly long distance when you're playing online, especially since it has a really long um, active frames. So the whole time the tongue is on screen, even when she's pulling it in or like it's just sitting there. If the opponent like walks into it or like walks into the like any of the length of it, they're gonna get hit by it, and it does a decent chunk of damage on its own. So, and she has a few versions, like that's her quirk too, and this one. So she's a lot of moves that look the same. She can do it in the air. She does it straight ahead. If your opponent's in the air or something, you can use this from a distance to try and prod at them. Um, as I showed before, it's a really good um, move in the air for getting a wall splat. But essentially, it's kind of like Tamaki's his swordfish move. It's just used as like sort of a projectile, a spacing move if you don't want to run in and do a button. Because I think it reaches even further than her buttons do, so like, yeah, yeah, definitely. So yeah, it's a like projectile-ish move. And if you hold down the button, she will glow, and she has a charged version, and then if you press the button now, that's where she gets her invisibility move. Um, don't be deceived, I was deceived by this, um, by the menu. It doesn't say that you can charge this one, it says to charge with the quirk 2, with B, but that doesn't do anything. And then I was, like, so confused as to how I get the invisibility, but it's actually by using her quirk 1, or Y, if you're on Xbox. But yeah, when she's invisible, as I said before, you don't, the opponent doesn't get to see. Um, obviously, you're not completely invisible. You can be seen, so it's not crazy in that sense. But it's crazy because that was my red attack. But you, they can't see that it's my red attack because it's like it's, it's hidden. <laughs> they don't see the um the flash of colors. Like if I do my armor attack, they can't see that I'm doing my armor attack or getting ready to do my armor attack. It just happens, and they've like maybe they went to press a button, and now they've gotten hit by my armor attack, and I went in for a full combo. Or if I'm invisible and I'm like running around and I go to press a button or something, and then I do this, they couldn't see that that was a red attack. It looks very similar to her other like movements, 
and they can't see the redness to show that it was unblockable. So, yeah, it's very powerful. I like to do it a lot. It does take a little bit, like, to set up because you have to hold the button down, and sometimes using this can be unsafe, so I usually put out a support or something. And usually when the support's out, and then they get scared with the support and stuff, and then you can really go in with the red attack. But yeah, it's a really good move. Um, and it's very unique. There's no other character in the game that has a way of hiding what their inputs are, whether they're doing a red attack or a yellow attack. So yeah, it's very good, and it gives her really strong mix-ups. Um, I'll just say something else. I know I'm spending a while on this button. Like if I did two attack, wait, let me put it in him on guard, and because they're going to be quite scared of you once you're invisible. So if if you decide to not go straight in for the red attack, because they maybe they're predicting it. If you just go in for two buttons, and that was her red grab, she has a, a command grab, um, her tilt quirk 2 held, they're going to be scared and if they block your attack string, you can mix them up with this, and grab them with that, and then they're going to be caught. Yeah, so, when she's invisible she has lots of mix-ups, crazy mix-ups, and obviously like she can do a counter to that red attack by doing her armor attack, and like, yeah. Very, very mixed up and very scary when she's invisible, even though she's not actually invisible. <laughs> Anyways, her tilt quirk one is this, um, <laughs> I don't know, rapid tongue flick move. Basically, it's just like a combo end or a combo starter. I like to use it after armor attack. Um, oops, it didn't hit properly there. <laughs> And that's how you can get some of her highest damage, not loot combos. That get pretty decent damage, which is, that's about average damage, which is pretty good for one dash cancel. But I also really like to use it on block. Because even after the, it does like what looks like, you know, the final blow that sends them flying back, because a lot of moves like do that, so you can just take this guard. So it seems like it's the final hit and like the last one and I would have been unsafe, you know, when he gets launched back just there. So a lot of the time, if I've done like my string into this, which is pretty easy for me. Oh, wait, let me just play this guard. <laughs> so I do something like this and then they're blocking this ready for the final hit. See, okay, he's being pushed back. And then that's when people go in to punish because it seems like it's the final hit of it and it's, it's definitely like unsafe if they punish it at the right time. But they punish it. They go to move in or press a button, and they got caught so much by that. Um, here I'll show again. He gets pushed back. And then they go in for a button, and then they get hit by it again, because she can actually like hold it down for so long, even after it stops hitting. So if and if I hit him with all of this, he's gotten launched out of it, but she can still do it, and that's how it works on block as well. They can get hit by the final hit, but it's still going and they're going to get hit by it. So yeah, it's a pretty interesting move, good for combos, it um, has a high tendency to wall splat as well. There we go. Yeah, an overall really good move, it's pretty important to a move set. Good combo extender, combo ender for a wall splat, and also she can use it on block. And this is also the main tool she's always going to be using, whether on the ground or in the air. Um, whoops, to combo into her plus ultra one. Because it keeps the opponent nearby, does some more damage, and... Wow, good demonstration, messing it up the first time. <laughs> There we go. It's usually like extremely consistent, and you can do it obviously on the ground as well, doing the same thing. See, so yeah, that's the main way I always combo into plus ultra one, and then she can combo out of her plus ultra one if you don't care like me. But we'll get to that to the, in the combo portion once we've done all the buttons. So, a quirk two is this lick very similar to her quirk one, except except it's. Oh, Except it's angled upwards. It reaches actually, I think, further than the other one, and it reaches into the sky. So if you have the opponents, you know, jumping around and and doing dashes and stuff, or like doing in the air, doing armor attacks, or trying to zone from the air or something, she can like snipe them out of the sky just like a fly. 
and lick them out of the sky with this move. So, obviously if they're on the ground, this version's better, because it's fast and it has good tracking. But if they're in the air a lot, do the air version, or if you're punishing an air move, you can do the air version. But yeah, the ground version is one you can be going for most of the time. The air one's really good to see, yeah, if you jump there. Yeah. Whatever, and if you're in the air, she dia angles it downwards. So if you're high in the air and you've done a combo and your your opponent thinks you're gonna land, you can actually cancel it early. Like if I'm over here, and then like whatever I'm doing in the air, if we've done a really long combo and they've landed on the ground and Froppy hasn't, I can be up here and they're trying to punish me for landing and they'll press a button, but she can just lift downwards and catch them that way. And that's the main one you can be using when you're in the air because her quirk one in the air goes straight ahead, so they have to be in the air with me. So yeah, sometimes you can even whiff the Quirk 1 and then they go to punish that. Then you go for the Quirk 2 and you can just, you know, catch them for a bit of damage. And this one, you can actually... You can get combos off of them if you dash cancel, just letting you know. So yeah, if you ever catch the opponent, like, thinking they can punish you... Why didn't I say that comboed? Oh my goodness. Oh my god, wait, wait, one more try. Are you kidding me? Anyways, yeah. You can get damage off of this. What is happening? Hello? <laughs> this combo is usually pretty easy. This is actually ridiculous. There we go. Oh my god. She can get damage off of it. Dash cancel, just like the ground one. Let's see if I can get this first one. There we go. Yep, damage off them if you see they get hit by it. Oh my god, that took too long. <laughs> and also if you dash cancel, they actually become plus one block, so you're guaranteed to get an attack afterwards. Okay, so we just did a quirk 2. Now her tilt quirk 2 is this grab. Just grabs him and meets him behind her. It's actually a really good move if you're trying to get a wall splat, but the wall's behind you. Maybe it's one of those maps that only have one wall or something. You can just grab them with this. Like, do a single attack into, or like, do her combo into it, and then end it with this so that you can actually get a wall splat and extend like that, because she just throws you over her shoulder. And you can mess up your combos, because that's what I like doing. But yeah, essentially, it's mainly going to be used, like, the ground one's going to be used in mix-ups on her attack strings, and like I said before, when she goes invisible, it can be really strong mix up because it seems like it's a last hit, and then you actually just throw them with the red move. It, it's very good. Very good mix up tool. It's great to have a command grab where you can have a red attack that you can cancel into. Um, she doesn't really get anything off of it because she sends a flying so far. That's why you want to be doing it facing the wall because then you're guaranteed to get something off of it. Usually you can get sometimes a, a quirk one, one of those legs. But yeah, unless you're. Button, your back's to the wall, you're not really going to get too much from it. Okay, in the air version though, is a re it's really good, so she can combo into it, she grabs them, flings them onto the ground, and because she doesn't send them flying so far away, she can actually get things off of this one. And she, she can dash cancel to get a regular combos after it, or if you just want to flip the button afterwards, like to end the combo, she can cancel it into other of her quirk buttons, and I always suggest usually doing her quirk too, because if you've done a combo into it, you're probably a decent way in the air, and things like her quirk 1 are gonna miss. And this is where you saw me mess up before, you have to time it to where they're like the highest, but not like the actual highest, you have to like, they reach the highest point and then they start falling again. That's when you do the button. And then it adds a lot of damage to the end of your combos. So like for an air combo, that was pretty good damage. Good, so yeah. It's a damaging way of ending your combos. And you can cancel them with your other quirk buttons. There we go. 
And yeah, and once again, in the air, because it's a command grab, it can be pretty scary as a mix-up. So if I did, like, something like that, you know, it can be scary. Or, like, if I'm in the air. That cancels, it looks like there's something coming afterwards, but I'm actually just cancelling into this red attack, and you see there, I try, it looked like I was running away, but then I go into a red attack. It can just be a good mix-up to it, or you can just like dash up and do this, but then if they think you're going to attack, then you've just caught them. And yeah, it's a good move. Okay, now that we've covered all of her buttons, eventually, we can get into it. Or I'll quickly show up her plus ultra 1, it can be done in the air and on the ground. Which makes it a really good tool for using it in her combos. And it's pre pretty easy to combo out of it. First, sue you, unless you mess up like me, because I like doing that when I'm recording. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's a, it's a good move, easy to combo out of, and you can connect it off of anything. So, like, even if you're in the air and you want to get some unlike breakable damage and you want to make sure they don't use a support or anything. You can always go into plus ultra 1 quickly after any sort of hit, and get a big chunk of damage that they can't bring out their supports during. Okay, now let's get into our combos. So, the regular bread and, cup oh, well, bread and butter combo that I like to do with Tsuyu, um, if I'm not using her loop, like this one, like if you're using the loop, a bread and butter combo looks like this. And then at some point you'll do two attacks into the quirk one, and then you've gotten 10,800 damage. I think I got 11,500 damage before. Just depends on how many repetitions you want to do. But I don't really want to show you guys this because it, obviously it's broken. It's not fun. That's that, uh, that's not what I like to cover. <laughs> Yeah, okay, so a regular combo with two non-looped looks something like this. Two attacks into the yellow attack. Into a quirk one, into this, and then time quirk two correctly, and then 9,700 damage is good damage for a single dash cancel. That's average damage, pretty good. Especially since people are always saying, Oh, Tsuyu gets no damage from anything, she's so low tier. But yeah, that's pretty good damage if you ask me. Sometimes you mess it up, like especially if you're me recording. But usually they're not that hard. It really depends on when you cancel into the quirk one there. If you cancel it too early or too late, you can mess up in so many ways. But yeah, other than that, it's pretty simple. If you want to make it easier, you can like leave out either the yellow move or the uh, tilt work one. But obviously, it does more damage if together. And you got to make sure you dash cancel before. Um. Yeah. If you want to get a wall splat, you can either just cancel it earlier if you think you're um if you think you're gonna get a wall splat somehow from the ground, but usually I recommend doing that. Now we're on the wall. And there, that was 10,000 damage, single dash cancel. I could have done more. Here, I'll show again what I could have done. Oh, damn it. Oh, what am I doing? What am I doing? Sorry, guys. Two hits into the yellow attack, and then do something like this. Nope, no, 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 no. Oh my goodness. Wall splat and dump into the air. And grab them. And then something like that. Oh yeah, that was similar damage. But yeah, you get the point. You could have added dash cancels or whatever. But that's pretty pretty good damage for Tsuyu. Um a lot of the time I like to add just one repetition of the um, armor loop into it. So I'll do one attack into the armor attack. 
and then two attacks, and then stop that way. Whoa. We're on the wall suddenly. <laughs> And then she will get more damage from that, just from adding one loop. You can add more and more if you'd like, but I don't know, I feel a bit cheap if I do any more than one. I think it would be really fair if she did one, it gives her slightly better damage. It's not crazy overpowered. And she's getting, yeah, decent damage. Um, anyways, yeah, that's her bread and butter combo. She can do practically the same thing from the air, and leave it early, and just end it with zero dash cancels to get 7,800 damage, which is pretty good for a red attack and no dash cancels. You can dash cancel and basically just do the whole thing twice. And get 10,000 damage, which is pretty good damage for off of a red attack. That is a really good red attack, and that is a really, really good red attack, especially if you're invisible. And then all of a sudden you're getting 10,000 damage just because your opponent didn't react to you doing a red attack that they can't react to. So yeah. I actually think Tsu's damage is quite high or decent. Um, if you're facing a wall and you get a red attack, you can do a combo like this. Oh, and then cancel a bit earlier, but you get the point. Use a quirk 1 to send them even further flying into the wall. Ten thousand three hundred damage for zero dash cancels. It's pretty high damage if you ask me. Um, for her, um, because she can combo into her plus ultra, um, and combo out of it pretty easily using supports like Jiro or someone. You're probably gonna be doing that off, um, pretty often. There we go, 16,600 damage off of a pretty easy combo, and using her. Mm, plus Ultra 1. You can even have zero dash cancels if you like. There we go, 15,000 damage, 15,700 uh, 15, damage. Of course I get it as soon as I <laughs> stop recording and try again. Anyways, yep, that's an easy combo she can get with using a Jiro support, and obviously it'll work with someone like Kami or Bakugo. Not Momo, I just have Momo here because I like my teams to be somewhat canon, and I feel like Tsuyu, Froppy, and Momo works pretty well. Because, you know, girl squad, UA girls. Anyways, um, what other combos can you get with two? Basically, it's all going to be about the same thing, whether you start with the red attack and however many dash cancels you want to put into it. Obviously, you're going to end your combos in different ways if you've gotten into the air, like doing something like this, like you'll end in a wall splat. And, yeah, basically, just using her bread and butter combos and her main uh, use of mix ups and her really strong mix up is her when you have her charged quirk one and you can go invisible. Then she has really, really strong mix ups. You can always go in for this red attack, and then from the red attack, you're getting good damage. Doing the same combo, basically. Or you can go in for a regular attack string, and if they block that, then you go for this red attack. Essentially, she's like really scary mix up machine when she's invisible. And that's basically to you in a nutshell, guys. She's not weak at all, I don't think. Like, not one tiny bit. 
She has really good wall splat tools. She has good pressure on guard. She is surprisingly good at breaking the opponent's guard. And she has really interesting guard pressure with this move, because a lot of the time they release block far too early, and then they get hit by it. She has interesting um, spacing tools with her tongue attack. With these ones that like just little pokes that catch the opponent so many times in a match. Like you, you don't even know until you play to how many times you hit with these. They're not even projectiles; they just hit so much. And obviously, because they're scared of those, you're going to be able to hit them with your red version in the air here. Like if they think you're jumping in the air to do the quirk too, and you grab them and then do whatever combos from whatever you want. She's just. I don't know, she's a fun character, she can do a plus ultra 1 in the air, which is really powerful, she's always able to get high damage and convert using Jiro, and yeah, she can get combos, has great mix-ups, and she's actually kind of like an interesting brawler with mix-ups, she doesn't have any projectiles, she just has really interesting movement with her, um, ye her yellow move and stuff, but yeah, that's Suyu in a nutshell, I hope you guys enjoyed, I'll see you in the next one, bye guys! No, that didn't work at all. <laughs> Anyways, yep, I already said bye. Thanks for watching, guys. I only have a few characters left to go, so look forward to that. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Bye.